Yeah, you can see all the freaking orange splatter from the coolant. We also saw it dripping, which I think is kind of weird. Factory bands up here, you do have to cut off. At the hole, I just went half at a time. Just want to make sure you don't nick the radiator hose. That's garbage. On the other side, slip that. I'm just gonna take my tiny screwdriver, give my pick a little bit of room to get in there. Just work that in carefully. Free up that hose. Already puking right on my belt, so that's good. That won't hurt anything. Okay. And we'll just let that go right into my EPA approved catch can that we have on the ground. Pop this one. If this one comes off easy. as far as bullshit goes. There we go. Yeah, that's nice and hot. Try to hold that one so it goes. It's on. Screwdriver in there, get my pick some room. Just about off. Uh -huh. That's exactly how it should come off. Just slam your knuckles. Look how nasty this thing is. You can see it's been leaking for a while because not much corrosion on there. This crack got made much worse. But we're taking it off to be honest. But definitely crack. 
back to there. And there's probably more cracks. You can see it's all nasty. Billet aluminum, Nishimoto. This one piece is gonna add at least, well, it's a diesel, so 60 horse. Two, two and a quarter inch. One, one and three quarter inch. Obviously the two big ones and one small one. Now don't forget to put your clamps on before you install the fitting. might think about orienting them in a good looking way. On this one, on your small one here, take that spring clamp. your finger and then just throw that up. You don't need that. Put this on the same orientation as all the others. Take your fitting, put it back in the same orientation. Make sure your hoses are on fully and start cranking them down. Don't get tempted to use an impact or some kind of driver on this because you can over tighten these. Ah, of course, and you're going to need a deep 10 mil. because you will bottom out on the threads. So since we spilled a whole bunch of coolant and got on the belt, our crossover. I'm gonna use some just regular water. The kind you get from the faucet. I'm just gonna rinse all that coolant down. Make sure I don't get any belt squeaks or slippage. Now the one thing I don't really like about this is that I had to run these clamps all the way down just to get them to be tight so i don't know when we're gonna fire it up check for leaks but it's kind of interesting a lot of people talk about this fitting and this weld being a point of failure um number one mishimoto is a good brand number two you know you're so many things on this truck are aluminum. I don't think you're going to have a corrosion issue, maybe a heat cycle issue. We're going to find out. We'll see if it cracks ever. Look in your manual and look right up here on the coolant jug. OAT coolant MS12106 is your spec. That's the Mopar part number. The peak 
organic acid technology for Chrysler 2013 and up, pre diluted, will work just fine. Make sure you top it up and burp the system. Just to recap what we used a pair of side cutters. The second pair of side cutters when the first set isn't big enough. Uh, big pair of channel locks to get that spring clamp off. Some kind of a pick to get these hoses free from that old plastic fitting. There's other ways to get the hose off. Just make sure you don't damage it, nick it, cut it, anything. Uh, and then a 10 mil deep socket to get these tightened down.